So, what's it like being an Ontario certified supply teacher in the middle of a worldwide pandemic? Let's just get right into it. Well, first of all, this is what you have to look like. Right now I have makeup on, which I don't usually have when I go to school because the uh, kids don't even see my face anyways. But I don't have my lashes done, I don't have my nails done, I don't have my eyebrows done. Just kidding, that's not important at all. So a lot of people have asked me why I chose to go back to work around this time. Ontario just hit 700 cases. But the truth is that I would have gone back to work the very first day that I could anyways. I had a bunch of paperwork that was still in process because I had just gotten hired in March and from there things went downhill and I wasn't really in touch with anyone from HR because they were too overwhelmed with obviously more important things. So the day that I found out that my paperwork had gone through and I could go back to work, um, I went back. I just, I know that all the full-time teachers, they can just envision their kids and they know like, okay, we don't want to abandon them. Like there's obviously some sort of emotional attachment. So shout out to all those full-time teachers who never gave up on their kids, no matter how hard it is adjusting to the technology and you know, dealing with the emotional aspect of the pandemic as well. And then me as a supply teacher, like I just felt like the least I could do is go in when the full-time teacher needs a break for whatever reason. So I work for a board that is a minimum of 60 kilometers away from me and is in an area that has an incredibly high amount of cases. So my parents were really iffy about me going back, but you know, we both knew it was probably the right decision because you turn on the news, you turn on the radio, all you hear is, we're in desperate need for teachers, we're in desperate need for chief teachers. So for those of you that don't know, a supply teacher is a teacher that's basically on call for a board, so they could be hopping from school to school in a single day because you can get 50% days or 100% days or they could be going to a different school every day. If you've specifically been requested by a teacher, you get a notification in your email saying, um, this assignment has been offered to you, please accept or decline it. So yeah, supply teachers do have a choice about whether they want to go into school. We have a platform that we go on and we kind of just search jobs and it'll tell us the location, sometimes the name of the teacher, whether it's a half day or full day job, and then it says like primary, junior, or junior intermediate. And also there's a filter that tells you if there's a duty required. Duty is like when teachers have to do supervision around the school for a certain amount of time. You only learn about your day plans when you get to the school. So before going into the school, you have to complete a self-screening every single morning and then reconfirm that when you actually go to sign into the school. Some schools will actually give you like this bag of protective gear. First topic, let's talk about washrooms. Now students have to avoid going to the washrooms during class time. And then of course, worst case, if they can't, they can still go. But the way that students used to linger in the hallways or use going to the washroom as a reason to just hang around with their friends, that does not happen anymore. There's a limit to how many people can be in the washroom. And the limits so far that I've seen have been, it's around two to four uh, students in a bathroom at once. So number two, sanitizer. Now there are sanitizers installed all over every school that I've been to, but only certain schools have required that I spray the student's hand every single time they come into the classroom. So distancing in hallways is practically impossible like I don't know how students would be able to keep six feet of distance between them without filling up the entire hallway and then it's also hard to maintain that because not everyone walks at the same pace not everyone's steps are the same um, distance so that's like almost impossible to do but I have seen every single teacher every school trying their best to maintain distancing with masks masks are required the second that students enter the school same with the staff we never take our masks off about the masks it's so hard to hear anybody like everyone just sounds like they're constantly mumbling I've had to stand in the front of a room and I feel like I am yelling and forget hearing the students in the back row if they're not yelling so I would have to go closer to them can't even go that close to them. It's kind of a mess with communication, but I think over time everyone's just 
getting used to it. The students do get to take their masks off when they go outside at recess, DPA, gym. Anytime they're doing physical activity, they do get to take their masks off, but we are supposed to continue enforcing uh, keeping a safe distance. Speaking of recess, it's been weird because one school that I went to, everyone still had lunch and recess at the same time outside, but there were three other schools that I've been to where recess and lunch is spread out uh, throughout the day so that only a certain amount of classes get to go outside. So that means if you're not in your friend's class, there's a possibility that you could go all day without seeing your friend who is in the same school, someone that maybe you would normally look forward to hanging out with or eating lunch with or catching up with during recess. All that is like gone. But also with the recess being spread out during the all throughout the day, the bell rings like at the most random times because everyone's schedules are all over the place. And another thing to note about recess is that all the students, all the classes have a designated area. So you have to go to this specific area on the school property and you're only allowed to play there, hang out there, just ever just be there. And speaking of friends and stuff too, like if people are supposed to work in pairs, they can't really work in pairs. Like you can't go sit beside your friend and work with them. You have to kind of yell across, not across the room, but you know, you have to like talk a little louder so that they can hear you on, beside you keeping the distance. So. If you think about like 20 kids doing that, it gets really loud. And yes, I said 20 kids because the majority of my classes have been completely full. The amount of organization put into this stuff by administrators is actually very impressive. You can see that they're trying their best. Some things are just out of anyone's hands. As for the staff, the staff room is closed. When I enter the office, there's a stack of used pens and a stack of new pens. So when I'm signing in, I'm always using a new pen. The badges that are given to us are constantly sanitized. I tried to keep this as concise as I could. I don't know how long this video is going to end up being. I hope it's not too long. But I just kind of want to answer some questions that people have asked me or that I was curious about before I started teaching. Since parents or siblings can't actually go into the school and see how things are going on, like why not just come on and give them a little bit of insight from someone who's there every single day. I hope it was reassuring for everyone to hear that schools are trying their best. Thanks for watching.